let us pray. Almighty Father in heaven, we thank you and bless you for this opportunity again to hear from you. This opportunity you have granted us to hear he that speaketh from heaven. That as you speak, O Lord, give us the spiritual ear to hear from him who is a spirit. For you told us God is a spirit. Lord, speak this word of life unto our soul, and to our soul shall be delivered. For it is written that you sent your word and heal them and deliver them from their destructions. Oh Lord, bring about total healing, healing of our soul, healing of our mind, healing of our body, oh King of glory, so that we'll be healed totally by your word in Jesus' name. Father, do us good as always in your good pleasure and bring about understanding of your truth in our hearts. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. And amen. Now, turn with me to Ephesians chapter 4. Ephesians chapter 4. And we shall be reading from verse 3 of it. And we'll read to verse 15 of Ephesians chapter 4. And the title of our message today is spiritual builders spiritual builders Ephesians chapter 4 reading from verse 3 endeavoring to keep the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace there is one body and one spirit even as you are called in one hope of your calling one Lord one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is above all and through all and in you all. But unto every one of us is giving grace according to the measure of the gift of Christ. Wherefore, he saith, when he ascended up on high, he led captivity captive and gave gifts unto men. Now that he ascended, what is it? But that he also descended first into the lower parts of the earth. He that descended is the same also that ascended up far above all heavens, that he might feel all things. And he gave some apostles, and some prophets, and some evangelists, and some pastors and teachers for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ, till we all come in the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God, unto a perfect man, unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ, that we henceforth be no more children tossed to and fro, and carried about with every wind of doctrine, by the slight of men, and cunning craftiness, whereby they lie in wait to deceive, but speaking the truth in love, may grow up unto him in all things, which is the head, even Christ. Hallelujah. May the Lord bless that wonderful reading in our hearts in Jesus' mighty name. As we have heard, as the reading was going on, telling us in verse 3 of it, of this Ephesians chapter 4, commanded us, counseled us, admonished us, that we should endeavor, you say, endeavoring to keep the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace. Say so we should keep the unity of the spirit. And then he went further to tell us that there is one body and one spirit. 
even as you are called in one hope of your calling. So he has one spirit. There's one spirit, one body, and uh, the calling is also one. One hope of your calling. We are called by one hope. This color, he says it's one, it's not two. It's one. Therefore, he says, endeavoring to keep the unity of the spirit. There is only one spirit. You know, he says, God is a spirit. That spirit, he says, is one. This God. You know, God, he spoke to the Israelites on Mount Sinai. And that he didn't see him, they heard the voice of his word. He said, this God is a spirit. He spoke in time past by the prophets. He has spoken in many different ways. He spoke by the prophets. Abel, he spoke by him. Spoke by Enoch. Noah is there. Abraham is there. Isaac is there. Jacob. Moses is there. The prophets are there. Elijah, Elisha. You have Isaiah, Jeremiah, Ezekiel. They are all there. He spoke. By the apostles, Peter is there, St. Peter is there, Paul is there, and all the apostles, they are there, Apostle John is there. He said, but endeavoring to keep the unity of the Spirit, that it is one Spirit that spoke by all these people. One Spirit, not two. And that's why here he says that the word of the Lord spoken by prophet Jeremiah. It's not Jeremiah speaking. The word of the Lord spoken by prophet Isaiah. It's not Isaiah speaking. The word of the Lord spoken by Paul. He's telling you the spirit. This one spirit speaking in them. That's why he says, my little children in whom I travel in birth again until Christ be formed in you. That's Galatians chapter 4 verse 19. It's not St. Paul. It's the Spirit of God himself speaking by the mouth of St. Paul. Saying, my little children. Who? The Spirit himself. Say, my little children. You know he told Nicodemus, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Flesh gives birth to flesh, but spirit gives birth to spirit. That we should endeavor to keep the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace. The scripture says that he is our peace. Who? Jesus Christ himself. That broke down the middle wall of partition. And making in himself one new man. One new man. Not the old man. That's why he says, if any man be in Christ. He's a new creature. All things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new in himself. He made peace in himself. He cleans us, purged our sins by himself, and sat down by himself on the seat of majesty on high, according to the scripture. He says, endeavoring to keep this one person in your heart, this one spirit, that there is one spirit and one body. There are not two. And that this one spirit is bringing us, or every one of us, into his oneness. Into himself. You know, he says that, that we are baptized. As many of us that have been baptized into Christ have put on Christ. This Christ, this one body. This Christ himself, he keeps telling us. And that this Christ is one. One spirit, one body. That we are baptized into this one body by his spirit. By we listening to this one person. From Genesis to Revelation, he said there is only one Spirit, the Holy Spirit of God, that spoke and men were commanded to write. That's how we have these holy scriptures in the Bible. He said he is one, endeavoring to keep this one person, this unity of the Spirit, and in the bond of peace. In verse 5 of Ephesians chapter 4, one Lord, he said he is the Lord. One faith, 
He says that is our faith. You know, he says Jesus Christ himself is the author and the finisher of our faith. One baptism, as we have said, that as many of us that have been baptized into Christ have put on Christ. Therefore, there is no Jew, no Gentiles, no male, no female, no difference, just one Christ. In verse 6, one God, he say he's God, and Father of all. It's one God. He said this God is a spirit who is above all and through all and in you all. Say one God. He is above all and through all and in you all. That's why he says, wherefore God has highly exalted him. Who? His body. Jesus Christ, the Son of God. And gave him a name. That is above every other name. That at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow. Because he want to gather all into Christ. Both in heaven and on earth will be reconciled into this one body. Into this one person. And you see, so that's what he's saying in verse 7. He said, but unto every one of us is giving grace according to the measure of the gift of Christ. He said, Christ now is the package, is the gift. One gift given to all because everything is not wrapped up in this one person. In verse 8, wherefore he said, When he ascended up on high, he led captivity captive and gave gifts unto men. This one gift he said, Gave to every one of us, whoever you be Jew, Gentiles, male or female, born or free rich or poor, educated, uneducated. He said this one Christ is giving to all. That's why he said according to the gift, he gave gifts unto men. What gift? He told us in verse 7. That according to the measure of the gift of Christ, that Christ himself is the gift. You know, he says that God so loved the world that he gave us his only begotten son. He gave us his only begotten son that the law, the commandment, God gave to Moses to give to the Israelites. But he said grace and truth came by Jesus Christ himself. That of his fullness have we all received grace for grace. That is, what God gave is what we receive. And what did he give? He said he gave us his only begotten son. And this son of God is Jesus Christ. Now he went on in the reading we read in Ephesians chapter 4, in verse 9. Now that he ascended, what is it? But that he also descended first into the lower parts of the earth. Verse 10. He that descended is the same also that ascended up. Fall above all heavens, that he might feel all things. He said the same person, the same person that descended, that came from heaven. He says the same person that ascended, that he might feel all things. That means it is in himself, by himself. Then he now tells us in verse 11. And he gave some apostles, some prophets, and some evangelists and some pastors and teachers. He says he gave some of this one man, this one body that descended from heaven. And that the same body ascended, not another. It is he that came that ascended. He said this man that came from above, who also who, who, who came down, who also ascended up on high, far above, he gave some of his body. To be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, and some pastors, some teachers of this one body. And the reason is that he had done it in verse 12 for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. He did this so, so that he will perfect every one of us in himself. He told, said, be ye perfect, for I am perfect. He told Abraham, walk thou before me and be thou perfect. He tells us in James 1.25, looking unto the perfect law of liberty. 
You see, he says, as you go to the mirror to look at the mirror, and then as you continue looking, then you will not be a forgetful hearer if you keep looking at the mirror. He says, that's how Christ is, the Word of God, the Holy Scriptures in the Holy Bible. And that as we keep looking unto him, we are changed by the same spirit, the spirit we are looking at, the same word we are looking at, will change us to his image, to himself, from glory to glory. Wonderful. He said that he did everything in himself, by himself. The same person that descended is the same person that ascended. Wonderful. Why? Because he has taken over all things. He has taken over all things to himself. So that we would be perfect in him. That is, we will receive his perfection. In verse 13 of this Ephesians chapter 4, T, we all come in the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man, unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. He says, so that none of us will be lacking of the knowledge of the Son of God. That's why in this Son of God, in his body, he gave to some of his body, apostles, some of it, Prophets, some of it, evangelists, some of it, pastors and teachers. Are you hearing? He said this is why he came, so that we will not be tossed to and fro by the corny craftiness of men, by flesh and blood, so that we will not be tossed by the wind of doctrines of men, so that we will be built up. We are looking at spiritual builders. He said this word, this man, that has descended is the same that ascended. And that's why it says, I will build my church. The gates of hell cannot prevail against it. He's saying that he will build himself inside you. Inside you. You, you, that man, that woman. He said he will build himself so that you will know him. The very ground and pillar of the truth, which is the church. That's why I say, I will build my church. The gates of hell shall not prevail against it. We are looking at the spiritual builders. See, he gave some to be prophets, apostles, teachers, evangelists. That's the truth. You can see, if you go with me as a reference to 1 Corinthians chapter 12, you see... What the scripture holds. First Corinthians chapter 12. Reading verse 12 and 13 of it. And it reads. For as the body is one and hath many members. And all the members of that one body being many are one body. So also is Christ. Look at it. He's saying that as the human body. Your body. You man, you old woman listening to this message. As your physical body is, which has many parts. It has legs, has hands, head, eyes, and various parts of your body. He says, so also is Christ. Exactly as you are. He says, as you have different parts, so also Christ has different parts. In verse 13. For by one spirit are we all baptized into this one body. This one body. Of Christ, which is describing to us whether we be Jews or Gentiles, whether we be born or free, and have been all made to drink into one spirit. That is why he says in John chapter 6 that his flesh is meat indeed. He's talking of the body, his body, the body of Christ. His blood is drink indeed. He's talking of the spirit. He said, We have all been made to drink. Into one spirit. There is one body. The body of Christ. And then there is one spirit. He said it is the spirit that baptizes us into his body. He brings us into this one body. And then make us to drink him. Drink him as you drink water. He told the woman Samaria. That if you know who is speaking to you. You would rather, have rather ask him to give you living water. 
living water that whosoever is at test let him come and drink of the water of life freely as the scripture says that whosoever drinketh of this fountain out of his belly shall be flowing out rivers of living water he said we are made to drink into this one spirit and we are baptized into this one body that as the human body is so also is Christ and so that's why he said he gave some to be apostles, some prophets, some teachers, some evangelists. You see, who did this? God himself. He did this so, so that we will be furnished, we will be thorough, completely. Go with me to 2 Timothy chapter 3. 2 Timothy chapter 3. In his second Timothy chapter 3, he told us that in verse 13 of it, he said, But evil men and uh, seducers shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. He said, Evil men, men of the flesh, fleshly men, that's to be carnally minded. He said, They will wax. Stronger and worse, worse and deceiving and being deceived in verse 14. But continue thou in the things which thou hast learned and hast been assured of, knowing of whom thou hast learned them. This is St. Paul writing by the Spirit, or the Spirit writing by St. Paul. He says that evil will continue, will expand. They will go more and more. But he said, you, whom he's speaking to right now by this message, he said, continue thou in the things which you have learned and has been assured of, knowing of whom thou hast learned them. Verse 15. And that from a child thou hast known the holy scriptures. That's it. That's what he has learned from a child. Which he says, hold on to it, that evil men will be waxing stronger and stronger. They will be seducing people. They call it, it's called it seducing spirit. To draw men away into perdition, into the flesh. To make them carnally minded. He said, but you, Timothy, continue in the things which you have learned, in verse 15, that from a child thou hast known the holy scriptures which are able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith which is in Christ Jesus. He said the scriptures. He's able to make you wise. He's able to build you up. Verse 16. All scripture is given by inspiration of God. Every scripture. From Genesis to Revelation. He says it's given by God. That's why he said to us, endeavoring to keep the unity of the spirit that it is god that inspired all the scriptures i read, I read again verse 16 all scripture is given by inspiration of god and is profitable for doctrine are you hearing he says profitable for doctrine that doctrine is apostolic that's why you hear he says you you are built up upon the foundation of the apostles and the prophet Jesus Christ being the chief cornerstone. There's no other foundation can a man lay than that which is laid. He's talking of the foundation. When you hear of doctrine, he's talking of the apostolic, the foundation himself. You see, in, in Isaiah chapter 28 verse 16, he says, The Lord himself laid the foundation. In Zion, a stone, a tri stone, a cheap corner stone. You hear of the in the message we had, the stone of Israel. He says a stone. Who laid the stone? God Himself. Who is the stone? Jesus Christ. The rock of ages, the ancient of this. He said, This scripture we are reading came by the inspiration of God. God is the foundation Himself, and therefore is the doctrine that is the apostolic. And Profitable for doctrine, for reproof. Are you hearing? You see the teachers there? It's for teaching. To teach in this same scripture, it says the doctrine is there to lay the foundation. The teaching is there, the teachers are there. And for correction, you look at the evangelists to evangelize you, to correct you in case we are deranging, in case we have gone off track. Look at it. And for instruction, you see the pastors, they will instruct you, you know. 
in righteousness. It's all there. That's why he said he gave some to be apostles, some prophets, some teachers, some evangelists, some pastors. It's all right in the scriptures. This holy scripture, this one Bible, which he has given to us, he said, endeavoring to keep the unity of the spirit. Jesus says, the words I speak to you, they are spirit and they are life. There is life in the scriptures. He says, some of it is apostolic, the apostles. Some prophet, the chief prophet himself, prophetic. What he says must surely come to pass. He says, heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word, Jesus says, every word you see here that is written, he told his disciples, that is written of him in the law of Moses, in the prophet, in the psalm, in the apostolic, must be fulfilled. He said he gave some. He's not talking of flesh and blood. He's not talking of natural men. That's why he says that evil men will work stronger and stronger. They work worse. They go their wrong way. Look at it. It says, it's for all this in verse 17 of 2 Timothy 3, that a man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. You see the builder here? He says, so that you will be built up perfectly. That's why he says that he is meant for the perfecting of the church. That he gave some apostles, some prophets, some teachers, some evangelists, some pastors for the perfecting of the saints. Till we all come to the knowledge, to the full stature of Christ. Until we are thoroughly furnished, until we are thoroughly evangelized. By who? By the world. Those men who say God has made them so. They should remember that in the old time, the Levites were pastors. The Levites were teachers in the Old Testament system. So there were pastors, there were teachers, there were apostles. The word need be to have another. The scripture says, if there is already, why do you need, when there are schools already teaching people, why do you need to set up a school in the country that where schools are existing, where children are taught? Why do you want to establish something else if it is on earth? Go with me. Let's see that in Hebrews. Hebrews chapter 7. Clears the matter of we are looking at spiritual builders. Hebrews chapter 7. And see what the scripture says concerning the builder himself. You know, he said Abraham was seeking for a city whose builder and maker is God himself. If it was on earth, he could have found he walked from one city to another. He said he would have returned to the country where he came from if he was looking for a natural one. But he says it's a spiritual one, not on earth. Hebrews chapter 7. Look at it. It says that in verse 22 of it, But so much was Jesus made a shorty of a better testament. And they truly were many priests. Because they were not suffered to continue by reason of death. He said there were many priests, Levites, teachers. Many. But because of death, they die. When they die, they need to anoint another person. Another high priest over and over again. He says they were changing. They keep changing. But in verse 24. But this man, because he continued ever, had an unchangeable priesthood. Are you hearing? He said his priesthood is unchangeable. Who is this man? Jesus Christ himself. The word of God. Verse 25. Wherefore, he is able also to save them to the utmost that come unto God by him. Is there anyone that come to God by this man? Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one can come to the Father except by me. Who is this Jesus? That is the question. He is not a natural man. He is a spirit. That's why he tells us that in the beginning was the word. The holy scriptures in the Bible. These holy scriptures were with God. And this holy scripture is God himself. By him, God created all things, both visible and invisible. And that this word of God was made flesh. He came as a human being. He is not a human being. God made him flesh that was moving in the streets of Galilee, in the street of Jerusalem. 
He said, this man is a spirit, came from heaven. There is a natural man, there is a spiritual man. Who is this man? The word of God in the Bible. He said, this man, because he continues ever, has an unchangeable priesthood. That is why he says, heaven and earth shall pass away, my word cannot pass away. He is the word of God. He has an unchangeable priesthood. That's why, because he has an unchangeable priesthood, that's why he's telling us that it's the same person that came down, is the same person that went up again. That it was the word of God that came down to us. It is still the same word of God that ascended far above principalities and powers. And that this person has unchangeable priesthood. God has made him the priest forever after the order of Melchizedek, who the Holy Scriptures in the Bible is the priest of God, the everlasting priest of God, to mediate for us. Look at it in verse 25. Wherefore, he is able also to save them to the utmost that come to God by him. He said, the liver cannot. The Aaron, Aaron died. But this man does not die. So he's able to save to the end, to the utmost, at any time, any generation. He ever lived. He's able to save all that come to God by him. Seeing he ever lived and make an intercession for them. Look at it. When Abel was killed, Cain killed him. Who was interceding for him? The word, the Lord. He's telling you that if you believe in this man, if you come to God by this man, through the scriptures, you cannot die. You will live forever. He told Martha that anyone that believes in him, though he were dead, shall live. And anyone that believes in him and is alive can never die. And they don't understand what he's saying. God is not the God of the dead. He is of the living. Every one of them live in his sight. Do you know the scripture is alive unto God? He is God of the scriptures. He is not the God of flesh and blood. He is God of the spirit. That's why he told Nicodemus, spirit gives birth to spirit. Flesh to flesh. That except a man be born again. Born by the Spirit of God. Born by the Word. He wants to reproduce himself in you. So that you become a child of the Scripture. A child of Christ. By His Spirit. Just like you have taken your languages. You are speaking in this Word. You have become a child of that language if you don't know. But those languages end on earth. But Christ abided forever. He is in heaven. He is on earth. He is everywhere. He is the Creator. And so he says he is able to save to the utmost everyone that come to God by him, that take to the truth of God, that receive this life in verse 26. For such an high priest became us, who is holy, harmless, undefined, separate from sinners, and made higher than the heavens. It's not earthly. He's separate from man, from sinners. If he's earthly, like I said, then there was no need. You already have high priest on earth. Why do you need to have another high priest? There was already high priest in Israel. Caiaphas was there. So why should you have another high priest? He says it's not on earth. It's heavenly. It's spiritual is what he's saying. That this high priest is a spirit. He told Pilate. Pilate was saying, are you a king? Therefore, because they already have a king. Herod was their king. How do you need to have another king? There's confusion. He said, no, my kingdom is not of this world. It is spiritual. It is heavenly. God is a spirit. And therefore, his priesthood is spiritual. It is not earthly. And therefore, he says, he is said, made higher than the heaven. See verse 27. Who needed not daily as all the high priests to offer up sacrifice first for himself, for, for his own sins, and then for the peoples. For this he did once when he offered up himself. He says he did it once. Verse 28. For the law maketh men high priests, which have infirmity. But the word of oath, which was since the law maketh the son, who is consecrated forevermore. Amen. He says the law maketh men high priests, earthly men. Like Aaron was made by the law. The law God gave to Moses. He commanded Moses that Aaron would be the high priest. The law make men high priests according to the word. That the son of God 
himself is made by the word, it's not man, it's spirit, and that he is consecrated forevermore, he does not change. That means the word himself, the word of oath, the scripture itself is what he's saying. That the word itself is the eternal high priest. Who is the lawgiver? Himself. There's only one lawgiver. And therefore, he says he made men high priests, but those men, they die. Look at it this way. Let's say somebody has written a will. The will he wrote by himself is what will be speaking after he dies. Now, if it is man, he gave authority, that is, to execute his will, his estate. What if those men die? If he had just spoken to somebody, he said, look, those things I have, share it among my children when I die. Now, the man who said to her died. Then what of the man, the people he spoke to? Maybe he spoke to a lawyer, a human being, to share his house. Now, that person has died as well. How do you not settle the matter? That's why in will writing is written. It's the written will that is executed. It's not the solicitor. Anybody can execute it. Even when the person who wrote it is dead. That's what I mean. When the lawyer who wrote it is dead. Another person can execute it. So he's saying to us that the law made men, gave authority. It is that will that gave authority for men to be executing that will. When they open the will, they will be doing what the will says. But that the will self is the is is permanent that means it's there always so he's saying to us that christ himself the word of god is an eternal high priest whether men come and go he is ever living so whether men come and go whether another solid to come those we written will be executed at any time according to the system of men but now this one is from heaven jesus christ himself the word of god if men will write a will and it can be executed by somebody else, another person who did not write it. How much more God? So he's saying to us that Christ is an everlasting high priest. It's like that will. That's who Christ is. That it is not earthly. That if it is on earth, that they said that God has given them power, he has made this one apostles, or a prophet, and Peter. Okay, Peter and Cole, they are dead. It therefore means Christ will have to come again and die again to give power to men. Since that the process of giving the power was that when he came down, he ascended up, up on high. He had to die to, to, to give the power. So if it is man, he will need to be dying over and over again since ever he came. But it is not so. He said he did it once. Why? Because he gave power to his word, to the scriptures, not to men. So that at any time... Then the scripture will not be the intermediary, it will not be the mediator between us and God and the Spirit. Not man, not physical human being. That if it was physical human being, there were already men, Levites on earth, who are to intercede for the people on behalf of God. But those people don't continue, they die. So they couldn't intercede. So finally, what he did, he now did bring Christ in place and done away with the Levitical priesthood. And that gave us the Bible, the scriptures. So that this scripture, that's why I say there's one mediator, not Aaron anymore, one mediator between God and man, man, the man, Christ Jesus. Who is this man? He is a spiritual man. The holy Bible you are carrying, oh man, oh woman. He is the builder that will build you up. Look at this. Go with me to Acts chapter 20. You know, we're going to have part two of this message because it's... It should be explained properly so that we get the revelation of God by the scriptures. Now our time is running out. Let's li listen to one more scripture and then we'll pray. Acts chapter 20. Listen to what it says. Acts chapter 20. Now, this is St. Paul going away from those whom he came, went to preach to. And he told them this in Acts chapter 20 verse 32. And now, brethren, I commend you to God and to the word of his grace, which is able to build you up. Are you hearing? He said the word, the scriptures. He's, he's, he came as a man to preach to them the word. Now, when he finished, he says, I commend you to, the, to God and to the scripture, to the word of his grace, which is able to build you up. We are looking at spiritual builders. 
and to give you an inheritance among all them which are sanctified. You say you want to have an inheritance in God? He said, take to the scriptures. You must receive him. There is no other way. Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No other way can a man gain access to the things of God except by Christ, except by the Holy Scriptures in the Holy Bible. These are the spiritual builders, which he says he himself gave them authority to build us up. He gave authority to his word. That's why he said, this is my body. Take it. They did not understand what he's saying. That's why today they go to the shop and buy bread. He says his body, just as human body is, so also is the body of Christ. What body? He says, body that has prepared me. That I came in the volume of the book that is written of him. From Genesis to Revelation. That is the body. The body of Christ, which is the church which he wants to build inside you. Inside me. Then we now become his children. He says he's the vine. We are the branches. That's the truth of God. You saw what we saw? What we read in Second Timothy chapter 3. It says all scriptures is given by inspiration of God. Is able to build you up, instruct you, teach you, and then bring you into the full stature of Christ. Full knowledge so that you will not be tossed through and fro by every wind of doctrine. By the slight of men, corny craftiness of men. How will God give power to men to be teaching you? How is he going to do it? How does an animal teach a human being right? Animals have their own way. Men have their own way. So also is God. How can God be I'm wanting flesh and blood to be teaching spiritual things? When the scripture says no man has seen God at any time. Except the only begotten son who is in the bosom of the father. John the Baptist says that we are earthly. We speak of earthly things. But he that cometh from above is above all. And he alone speaketh the words of God. So he said I commend you to these pastors. To these teachers. To these evangelists, to these prophets, then until you come to the full knowledge of God. Please, attend to these spiritual builders. You know, the scripture will build you up. Once you are built up, you will not be uh, one that the devil can toss to and fro. Neither can men toss you to and fro by every wind of doctrine. No, because the doctrine of God is Christ himself. The word is not on earth. He's not here. And so that's why he's telling us, come over. He wants to build you up. Who said so? He said so, the word. He said, I will build my church. The gates of hell cannot prevail against it. Don't you see people who, who were built up by the word? Look at David. Because he was built up by the word, that's why he went after Goliath and cut him off. God wants to build you up, then you become a giant killer. You will not be ordinary. You see, he said the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of every stronghold. We don't fight against flesh and blood. It's a spiritual war. You can see. So he wants to get us out of craftiness, out of lies, out of uh, silly talk, and bring us into himself so that we speak the truth in love. We are anchored in him, the stone of Israel, the author and the finisher of our soul, of our faith. Jesus Christ himself, the unremovable, the unchangeable. Who? The word, the scripture. So, so he wants to build inside you, inside that man, inside every one of us. He said we are made to drink of him. Drink of his spirit. He wants you to drink the spirit of the word, of the scriptures. Then you'll be talking the talk of God and living the life of God. That is the building. Which he says, as newborn babes, desire the sincere make of the word, that you may grow thereby and be furnished thoroughly, not empty. You'll not be empty. He said, anyone who is eating, drinking milk, baby, is unskilled in the things of God. He doesn't understand. But anyone who has come of age eats the real food. And what is the real food? He says, Christ, the word. The word of God himself, which is expressly given to us. By this Christ, you shall succeed. You shall have inheritance in the things of God. Hallelujah. Amen. Now let us pray unto him. Like we said, we'll be having part two of spiritual builders. We have seen part one. And in part two, God shall help us and give us more understanding. Almighty Father in heaven, we thank you and bless you for your word. 
your word to our soul is so refreshing. It says like a thirsty man in the desert and he comes to an oasis of water. And so Lord, your, your word has refreshed our heart, reminding us that though the foundations be destroyed, the kingdom of God is in heaven. The throne of God is in the spirit. It's not on earth. And so Father, now we know that it is not on earth, it is in heaven. And so Father, bring us to that heavenly place. Set our affection on things above, not on things on the earth, not on things beneath, so that we will be in you and you will be in us in Jesus' mighty name. Oh, goodness, Father, build us up so that there will be no wind of doctrine, no foul spirit can blow us up. We will be rooted and grounded, like you said. If anyone take to your word, he is lacking to he that is built upon the rock, the ancient rock, the immovable rock that can never be changed. The, the, that person, he said the storm will come, the wind will come, it will beat and it will not be moved. Oh, Father, build us up by your word so that we become unmovable. Oh, Lord, do so and let your name be glorified. In Jesus' wonderful and unchangeable name we have prayed. Amen and amen.